Hi and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Uh, I know we were supposed to do the squirrel part two, but after reading some of the comments, especially one guy's, I thought I might have to back up and explain a little bit of the history of taxidermy to explain how I come up with my methods, where they came from, how I know they work, and how we know we won't end up with bugs in our squirrel. Okay, so now there will be a test after. Okay, so first the earth was formed, then came the dinosaurs. Then they died and became fossil fuel, which is a whole other story, a history of the Middle East. Then came the mammals, then came the taxidermists, okay? Now the first big American taxidermist was John Hornaday from Hornaday Bullets. He wrote the first book about taxidermy in the late 1800s. Then came Carl Epley, well who's he? He's a guy from the Chicago Field Museum. Now he was the one that came up with the first hollow mannequins or more modern mannequins instead of literally wrapping them and stuffing them. Then came J.W. Elwood, not of the Blues Brothers, but he was the founder of the Northwest School of Taxidermy. Now from him, we get to the Jonas Brothers and Henry Winchers from the Denver Museum. Now the Jonas Brothers and Henry Winchers were both in Denver, close to each other. Henry Winchers was the one who came up with the alcohol turpentine tan and all of that. And Jonas Brothers worked closely with him and they developed the paper mannequins, which led to then now the foam mannequins. Now from there it goes to this guy named Joe Kish, who looks a lot like Rasmussen, who if you look him up in history, it's pretty scary. Now, Joe Kish, what did he do? Well, he did a lot. Besides managing Jonas, he wrote the whole books of Jonas techniques. He ran a magazine, the first ever magazine for taxidermists called Taxidermy Reviews. He made the rules and set up the whole thing for all the competitions we have. And he founded the NTA. We wouldn't have competitions without him. We wouldn't have the rule sheet, any of that stuff, and nobody even knows who he is. Not, not only that, they fired him from the middle of judging in uh, the National Taxidermy Show a few years back. I told him to wear it like a badge of honor because uh, he didn't give the right trophy the right score or the right hit. Anyhow, now from Joe Kish, this kid on a bike named Mike Frazier went to work for him, okay? at Jonas and he started in sweeping floors and in the novelty department and whatnot. Well, Mike Frazier asked Joe Kish to teach him how to sculpt and also this other guy named Denny Bain or sometimes called Dennis Brain. Now they both learned how to sculpt under Joe Kish. Now Mike Frazier founded Research Mannequins and Denny Bain went over to McKinsey's Supply or as we call it the Dark Side. Okay, so Mike Frazier, from there you get me, okay, and from me you get Nope, and now we don't know where the legacy is going to go from there, but I can tell you that um, my techniques are solid and founded in, in, in a good solid foundation, and just because they're old school doesn't mean that, that they don't work. And I know that you hear all kinds of stuff on the net. You hear all kinds of people parroting all kinds of stuff. But let's back up a little bit. You know, there's a lot of master taxidermists. The true, there's really only two taxidermists that ever won the hat. That was the hat that they gave out. It says, Masters, I have one of them. And that was Mike Frazier and Dennis Bain. To get into Masters before, you had to, to be invited, first of all. You had to show a picture of what it was you were going to get to see if they'd accept it. You had to sculpt the mannequin you were going to mount on. Now to get in a Masters, you need 24 points and three blue ribbons. You know? And some people might say they have people mount their stuff to get their points. I don't know. But that's just me. And that's not bitter anyway. So these two guys are true Masters. And even though they're, they're, they sculpt in completely different styles, they have 
learn from the ground up. Now I'm learning from the ground up from, from Frazier and uh, I just want to really, really spread the, a good, solid, productive way to do taxidermy and I want to, to try to spare guys a lot of grief, a lot of agony, you know, when you can just buy one mannequin out of the box and mount right on it, I don't see a reason to to, uh, uh, to punish yourself every day. You should have fun at what you do. It should be a fun job. And and uh, you know if you're beating yourself up, pulling your hair out, and you know something's wrong. So anyway, I just thought that that I'd take this this week just to explain a little bit and. Um, <coughs> Joe Kish actually wants me to write a book about it. He says nobody will read it, but somebody should write down the, the pure, true history of taxidermy before it gets lost. Because, again, to back up, a lot of people, you know, Mike Fraser can call research mannequins now, and they, they say, and, and they say, who are you? You know, D does uh, does Dennis have your phone number? Or when they find out, oh, how long have you worked for research? So some people don't even know. You know, and that's that's a shame. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. JG will be back next week. He's off screwing off somewhere. Something about some kind of surgery he had to have. I don't know. But we'll see you next week. Oh, and tomorrow I'll be in North Hollywood. <laughs> this cracks me up. Uh, apparently being a backup rap singer. So uh, I'm going to need some luck with that. Anyhow. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.